All right. Hi, Chris. How are you? Doing great. How about you, Douglas? Doing fine. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me. So you're an actor, singer, playwright, director, and digital photographer. All at yeah. the same time? Uh, I take spaces in between them. I can be an actor and director or an actor and singer at the same time. But uh, I run some, when I'm doing a show, I scurry around and take pictures in between scenes. So you're here today primarily to promote a photo book. You've got a new photo book? Yes. Out? Okay. Challenge Accepted, that's the title. Challenge Accepted, okay. So what are the photos of? A lot of different things. Um, I've divided it into the book into four sections. So there are architectural shots because I'm always taking pictures of buildings, uh, night shots because I've always been fascinated with the way light plays and makes things look so different at night. Um, art shots, which are a thing that I've always done. Uh, Maybe people will think they're artistic, maybe not. And then the last section are manipulated pictures that I've uh, used the editing functions on on my camera phone to do. So they don't look anything like they started out, but I think they look cool. OK, why did you get involved in photography? Why did you start doing that? I got interested in it when I was probably in high school. I was looking back through some old things for another purpose, and it pretty much goes back to a trip I took uh, right after high school to Hawaii and uh, took a lot of shots there. And then since then, when I've traveled, I've had lots of opportunities to do the same thing. Um, and it got more pronounced after digital photography came along because then I didn't have to worry about uh, processing film or paying for that. So the book came about because there was a challenge that came through Facebook. A friend of mine sent it to me. It was seven days, black and white pho photograph every day, and you could not supply any explanation or have any people in the pictures. And I started taking the, sh the shots, and at the end of the seven days, I continued on, and suddenly I was 365 days in, and people seemed to like them, so I kept going. And today I'm posting 1,065. Wow. So this is one every seven days you're taking. Uh, one every day. Oh, one every day. Yeah, the first challenge was seven days, one picture every day. Oh, I see. OK. Uh, what was the very first picture? Do you remember that? Uh, the first picture was a photo at, on a stage because I was doing a play at the time. It's probably qualifies as one of the art shots. It's a semi darkened stage with a table and chair on it that I just thought looked kind of Interesting is a still life. Now you've taken photos with both film and digital. Do you have a preference? I like digital partially because uh, the cameras are smaller unless you get one of the big SLRs. And I used a regular one of those for a while. Um, and then um, when the camera phones got really good, the, the benefit was that I had my camera phone on me all the time, whereas I might be less likely to schlep a whole uh, set of gear for a real a regular camera. And really, when I started doing it, it was kind of a lark. I didn't thought it would just be for me. I would be the only one who was interested. And posting them gave me the sense that I wasn't just playing around for myself and that it was something that other people would appreciate. Some of them they appreciate really a lot and some slightly less so, but it's nice to have that input. So all the pictures that are in your book, were those were taken with a phone? Yeah, amazing. But yeah, it's true. Well, I know that the cameras on the phones are really good. I mean, from the interviews that I've done on this show, a lot of times I've asked people to switch to using their phone because the camera that they have built in on their laptop is older, the resolution's lower, and it's an amazing difference between the phone and what was built in to laptops if they're an older model laptop. But I didn't realize that phone cameras were as good as, for lack of a better term, a real camera. No, it's true. And I was very impressed as time went on because when they first started producing phones with cameras in them, I, you know, I was old school and I said, well, what would you need that for? And started using them for the practical purposes, you know, 
being in the store picking something up for someone else and being able to take a picture and say, is this what you meant? Uh, all the way through taking a quick shot if you run into somebody you haven't seen in a while, um, or in my case, just seeing something I thought was cool and taking a shot of that. And uh, black and white has always been an interesting uh, medium within the uh, within photography. Uh, I've always really liked uh, you know, Ansel Adams. Uh, there's a picture that Robert Duano did that's this couple in Paris who are in love. And that's always caught me very much. Well, black and white, I think, definitely has its place. And I recently watched a couple of episodes of I Love Lucy that had been colorized, and I hated it. I really wanted it back to the black and white because it just looked too weird. It does. And uh, on, on YouTube, there are these channels where they produce photographs of people all the way back to the early 1800s, and they colorize them as you watch them, and it's kind of creepy. Um, also, there's the black and white when it's photographs separate you enough from the subject that it becomes an art form rather than where, as I tell people, it's like there are things that can happen in a black and white picture that are taken as being a choice. And there are things that those things have happen in, in color and they're just a mistake. I had a uh, professor because I took one photography class in college and the, at the outset he said, so before you take this class, if your picture's not in focus, it's blurry. After you take this class, it's a technique. It's called soft. Okay, let me ask you a little something about your acting now. Are you primarily a stage actor? Yes. All right. Remesh Exclusive. Dramatic, comedy, both? Uh, yes, and musical comedy. So you sing, yeah. Yes. Would My Fair Lady be a musical comedy? Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, musical romance, maybe. I just saw it two weeks ago, uh, and it's wonderful. It's still going. I mean, I, I love that. I love that show. You know, interestingly enough, I did not like the movie. I thought the movie was didn't do it justice. Yeah, yeah. I tuned into the whole controversy about casting Audrey Hepburn as opposed to uh, Julie Andrews. And I can understand the objection. Um, Marnie Nixon, who did the voice, did her voice, uh, moved up to Seattle, where I'm from, uh, ap after that in the 70s, I think. And so I felt a little bit of a connection. Also, it, the show opened on Broadway on my birthday, but it was three years before I was born. Um, actually, my objection wasn't Audrey Hepburn per se, but it was the guy who played her sweetheart, the one singing on the street where you live. Ready. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't stand him. And yet every live production I've seen of it, they always picked a great one. He went on to place Sherlock Holmes on PBS. And I saw him in an, in an interview. He said he didn't sing either. So it was kind of comical when they sang the song together. So both of them were dubbed? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that might have been part of it. Yeah, OK. Yeah, because that's a beautiful song. It's my, it's my favorite from the show. Oh, it's a great song. Yeah, wonderful song. So are you still currently acting? Not since COVID started. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the theater company I work with and have since I moved to San Francisco, it's called Left Coast Theater Company, uh, has been working. And I'm on the steering committee and on the board. Uh, let's hit playwright, because uh, I want to talk a little bit about writing plays. How different is it writing a stage play versus a screenplay? Uh, there's a lot less description of the place and what people are doing generally. Um, scripts for TV and movies have a lot of camera directions, a lot of crossfades. If you watch a show on TV and, and think about how many cuts there are, each one of those uh, from inside to outside, from you know, from one place to another, uh, are all have to be explained in there. And they also has to explain what the weather's like and factors like that that will be important to the mood of the piece. Whereas on stage, you can get by pretty minimally. In fact, if you look at Shakespeare, he had almost no stage directions at all. Mostly it's just they came on, they came on, they went off. Well, that's interesting. 
And so in a Shakespearean play, all the blocking is done on the cuff or is it blocked beforehand? It's the choice of the director at that point. And uh, you may work with the actors to see what works best for them too, but it's open to interpretation. And I know that that's what a lot of people like about Shakespeare is there is so little specifically on the page besides the, the words uh, that people are speaking uh, that they can do lots of things. And that's how you see Macbeth done in 1930s Germany. And uh, I saw it and, uh, and much ado about nothing that was said at the turn of the 20th century. It was really quite nice. Okay. Um, do you have a favorite Shakespearean actor? Um, I really liked Olivier. Um, currently, I guess I'd say Ian McKellen I really like. Um, and now it seems to me like there are a lot more actors who are not known for that, who are taking on Shakespearean roles and women too. I say a few years ago, at this point in my life, it could have been 20 years ago, but I, Glenda Jackson played King Lear in fairly recent past. And I thought that was quite interesting casting. I'm sure she was wonderful because she's great. Um, I don't think that would be a problem at all. Uh, and she, she's known for it more uh, than a lot of the people who I might have seen in popular films or like Judy Dench you know, had done a lot as well. Yeah, I love Judy Dench. I, I love everything she's done from that sitcom as time goes by to playing M on the latest 007s. Uh, yeah, she's fantastic. My own personal preference for Shakespeare, I would have to go with Richard Burton. I've only seen him do snippets, but I hear that he was quite good. Yeah, for what short time he was on this planet, he was pretty good. <laughs> and he had a pretty uh, tumultuous life and a very interesting sort of public life with Elizabeth Taylor on and off. And it, the whole the whole package was was pretty interesting, I thought. Yeah, this a lot of people say that his acting, the choice of, of subjects and 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 uh, scripts went downhill after he got together with Liz and then he went more pop culture. Well, I would agree with that, you know, but uh, certainly the money that they made probably made up for any criticism of his artistic uh, creation. I think you're right. I mean, they did well together. I have seen uh, Virginia Woolf a few times. Yeah, that was great. that was brutal. Yeah. All right, Chris. Well, we got to wind this down. Uh, we're going to go out on a couple of your photos. That we're going to have a look at as we as we go. What is the book called again? The photo book. The book is called Challenge Accepted. Seven days, uh, one challenge on Facebook, and uh, nine hundred photos and counting. And it's available on Amazon. Okay. Do you have a website that you want to give out? Yes, it's Chris Maltby, all one word. Dot gallery. C H R I S M A L T B Y dot G A L L E R Y. OK, I've never heard of dot gallery. Is that new? It's brand new and I thought it was perfect that I came upon it as I was looking for a new uh, URL for a website. Yeah, it's a great one. It's perfect. All right, Chris, thank you for coming on. Best of luck with your book. I hope it does well. Thank you, Douglas.